Hello ladies, I am so excited that you've joined me today in this video. So this is actually part one of the marriage series that I was talking about in last week's video. So if you didn't see last week's video, at the end of the video I talked about kind of getting your guys' views on whether or not I should make like a mini marriage series. And this would be covering just a wide variety of tools and courses and things that my husband and I have learned since being married and really even since dating in some of these cases that have just massively benefited our marriage and I think kind of put us ahead in some ways than we would have been for sure if we had just been on our own and so I was so excited by the feedback I received I got so many super excited comments that were just so encouraging to me that this was maybe the next step of what I should do. So all that being said, I'm super excited to be sharing these tools with you and these different resources that I think are so, so helpful and so precious when it comes to really building a strong marriage. So I first though need to make a big disclaimer and that is that my husband and I have only been married about four years. We're almost to four years. And so obviously these aren't things that I have created or made up on my own, sadly, as much as I wish they were. These are things that are <laughs> given by people with a lot more wisdom and experience than myself. So that is also a comfort to me though because I think they know what they're doing. So with all that being said, let's jump in to my very first super simple tool that you can start using in your marriage today that is so beneficial. And I use this tool all of the time. And it is called the where are you tool. At least that's what I'm going to be calling it. So basically, this is a super practical tool you can use to rate where your spouse is thinks your marriage is or how he feels about you at the moment. And so the question is this, on a scale from one to 10, one being the very worst our marriage could be and 10 being the highest high we've ever been on in our marriage, where would you say our marriage is? And I love this question because it instantly removes the cliche answers of, oh, I think our marriage is good, or oh, I think we're doing fine, or we're doing okay, or we're doing really bad. And it gives you an exact number where you know exactly on the scale from one to 10 where your spouse is and kind of how they're feeling. And so I love asking my husband this because it's super revealing because there are times when I would say our marriage is at like a six. And yet he's like, oh, I think this marriage has been at like an eight. And it really opens up the door to then ask, why do you feel that way? Or what have I done this week that's made you feel like our marriage is an eight when last week you said it was a six or whatever. And so it's just a super practical, easy way to almost instantly figure out where your spouse is and how they're feeling in the relationship. So the very first question is, where are we on a scale from a one to a 10? And then the follow-up question to that is, how can I increase that number by one? So it's not, how can we go from a six to a 10? Because maybe that's gonna require a lot of time. Maybe that's gonna require some serious energy, rebuilding of trust, whatever it is. But what you can do is figure out just what is one thing I can do to move up the notch one step. And maybe that is like, I really need a break from the kids for a couple hours. I'm completely overwhelmed and I need a chance to recuperate. Or maybe it's we really need to go on a date. Or maybe it's, you know, you said this to me last week and it really hurt my feelings and we haven't discussed it. And so it can really give you instantly a practical thing you can do that your spouse tells you that can immediately improve your marriage and I find that to be so so helpful and super revealing as far as where your spouse actually feels you are in the relationship. The thing that I love too about this tool is that it doesn't require you to go out and buy a book or a course or anything. It's something practical you can start applying today. And another really beneficial thing about it is that it can kind of open up the door if maybe there's things that are bothering you that you just don't know how to bring up with your spouse. Because if you ask them, you know, where are we on a scale from 1 to 10, then hopefully they'll ask you back, you know, where do you think we are on a scale from 1 to 10? And it can kind of open up that door in a non-awkward way to discuss if maybe you feel like there's any problems. Another big benefit, though, with asking this question is that 
there are times when one of us will just be maybe more easily irritated or frustrated or seem really overwhelmed and it's easy especially for me as the woman to assume it's something that i did and it's really helpful asking this question immediately being able to gauge oh it's not something that i did or it's not something that he did it's a situation that is outside of our marriage you know it's the amount of things we have going on or a situation at danny's work or i'm really frustrated because i've had a rough day being a mom or whatever it is and so it's just a really easy way to kind of immediately figure out what the issue is in the marriage and how you can instantly improve that in some way the next thing though that i love about this tool that you can put in your marriage tool belt today, which I'm so excited about, is that you can really apply it to specific areas in your marriage, not necessarily your marriage as a whole. And so you can get super specific. And a way that I've done this before, and I've kind of done this even with myself to figure out like, do I feel like I'm doing a very good job in these areas as a wife? There is this course called his needs her needs i believe and it's actually on youtube and so last i checked it was free and my husband and i went through it together maybe the first year or two that we were married and it had some really good stuff in it but it goes through the top five needs as a man and the top five needs you have as a woman and so it's really fun to take something like this like this you know five primary needs a man has and go through and rank yourself in these five different areas from a one to a 10. And so I've done this before with just seeing how am I in the area of, let's say, companionship, you know, actually being my husband's friend. Do I think I'm a five? You know, am I a four? How have I been doing this last month in this specific area? And so I've done that a couple of times too and applied this in really specific areas rather than in your marriage as a whole. And so I think this can be a really beneficial tool to use in those areas as well. Okay, the next tool that I wanted to share about really quick, and I'm not gonna go into tons of detail on this because I'm sure there are videos that are so much more helpful than this one would be about this topic, but it is the five love languages. And so if you have not heard of the five love languages, I really encourage you to either maybe watch some videos on it or buy the book and go through and discover what your top two primary love languages are as well as what your husband's top two primary love languages are because it is so true that we speak love in the way we want to receive it oftentimes and so oftentimes we can be thinking we're really clearly expressing how much we love our spouse and yet they're not receiving that message in the same way because they have a different love language than our own and so just really quickly the five love languages are acts of service which is basically someone helping you with tasks getting things done for you the next one is physical touch this would be getting hugged getting a back massage just being more physically connected to people the third is words of affirmation this is receiving genuine compliments from others The fourth is quality time. This would be obviously just spending quality time with someone, being heard, feeling understood, feeling like you're interesting, and feeling like someone is actually listening and paying attention to you. It's not quantity of time, and that's what I used to think, but it's the quality of time that you actually spend together. And then the very last one, which is number five, is gifts. And this would be receiving a gift from someone that loves you that really clearly indicates that they actually know who you are and what you're interested in and has given you a gift that illustrates that point very clearly. So those are the five love languages and really knowing them and learning both your own as well as your spouse's is I think one of the easiest ways to really clearly communicate your love for your spouse. Okay, so I can't speak on all the love languages with a whole lot of knowledge because obviously I only have two primary ones. My top love language is quality time by far. But like I mentioned, I used to think this is quantity of time. And I really had to learn this myself as well as my husband kind of having to discover this about me because it's not necessarily how frequent the dates are or how often the conversations are happening. It's actually the quality that's put 
into them that really matters to me. It's really clear eye contact. It's feeling like you're actually listening and caring to what I have to say. It's asking good questions. And so it's really giving me your full attention for even just a small window of time. The second one that I could speak on with a bit of um, knowledge is words of affirmation because like I mentioned, that's kind of my secondary love language. And so for me, with words of affirmation, the important thing is not just knowing, oh, I'm proud of you or, oh, you look attractive today, but knowing the whys, I guess, behind it just really adds to the compliment. Sometimes if my husband says like, oh, you did a really good job on that, I'll be like, oh, what what made me do a good job on it? Or like, what did you like about what I did? And so I think it's more maybe getting the details of why you appreciate something or why you're giving that compliment or what spawned that thought rather than just the top layer compliment in it in and of itself, I guess, is kind of how I would explain it. And so that's kind of my view on words of affirmation and really how to speak the love language words of affirmation to someone whose primary love language or secondary love language is words of affirmation. So like I mentioned, my husband's love languages are acts of service and physical touch. So if any of you watching this video have one of those two or both of them as your primary love language, Would you be willing to comment down below some practical things people do for you that make you feel loved? Because I would love to apply them in my own marriage. Because like I said, I don't always speak in the language that is his love language. It's easier for me to speak in my own. So please do that. I would greatly benefit. So thank you so much for watching this video. This is part one of the marriage series. I will have many more videos like this coming in the future. I hope you found these tools helpful. I'm super excited about the pages and pages of notes that I've already collected of useful tools and nuggets and things that I've learned about both being a wife and about also just understanding even myself better and why I react a certain way or how to express love and respect to my husband in a more clear fashion. So I'm super excited about those videos. So stay tuned and I'll hopefully see you next weekend. Bye-bye.